Welcome to another episode of the Grappling With Life podcast. Um, I've been thinking about how I'm going to start this episode. And um, it seems very difficult to even run a show whilst everything is going on in, in Palestine. And I feel like that I'm not a pol political commentator. I'm not a... I'm not someone who's uh, eloquent in speech in regards to the situation. If you want to get some news on 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 what's happening, I suggest you go to Five Pillars and Dilly. Mashallah is doing a really good job and the team over there. But the way, only way I can describe it to you guys um, is ever since this this has happened, but also since it's been going on. And obviously, most recently, what's been happening right now, um, it's, how do I put this? The food tastes, you can't taste food. You feel numb. You feel angry. You feel frustrated. And as a man, to see people like this, who are your family? I know I was I was thinking about how can I frame this, and the only way I can uh, I was thinking about it the last few days. And the way I can frame this is: imagine you're in a room, and in the other room, you have all your beloved ones, all your family, your friends. They're in the other room. And they're locked in. And you have a viewing window where you, where you can see inside the room. And the most unimaginable things are happening to them in that room. And you just, all you can do is look inside. You can't open the door. You don't have the key. Um, and you're just witnessing horrific acts happening to your family. And I feel like maybe this is something that the wider Muslim community and even humanity is feel, feeling like. And on top of that, people are framing that your family are the aggressors when you can clearly see that they're the ones that are being aggressed, if that's such a word, or being set upon by people who are less than human. Um... And it's very difficult to kind of even talk about anything else. <clears throat> um, and I, I was thinking, how do I segue this conversation, this, this news, this, uh, into the topic that we're going to speak about today. So I've got Coach Amir with me, Dr. Amir. Um, and welcome. I know it's a bit difficult. It's a bit heavy. We started off, um, but I just couldn't start the podcast without actually speaking about it. And the, the, the fact that all we can do is actually just talk. And also seeing images coming out of Gaza and the things that these people, our family is saying, when I say our family, I mean, we see the Palestinian people as one of our own. Yeah. And they're asking, where are, where is, why is no one coming to help us? You know? And it's kind of like, how do you, how do you even process that information? You know? Hey, what can you say? What can you do? I don't know. Um, we feel, I feel like even just speaking to people like walking around, uh, you know, in day to day, there's a sense of just not hopelessness because I feel they are very hopeful. Um, but I think it's us here that we feel ashamed. I think it's a sh mm. shame, right? Mm. It's, 
I don't know how to explain it, man. It's, I remember, actually, I'll tell you a story um, on Aid, last Aid. <clears throat> we went to uh, Valentine's Park. They were doing a fireworks display there. So I took my kids and the whole family, even Zach's family as well, came, everyone. And we were sitting right next to the fireworks. The fireworks was about maybe 100 feet away. There was a lot of fireworks, yeah. As they started, as they started launching the fireworks, the noise was crazy. It was going on for about five minutes, mm-hmm. yeah. And then in that moment, in my head, I was thinking, what if there were rockets, bro? What if there were bombs falling over my head? How would I? Like, I was looking at my family. I'm thinking, mm-hmm. like, I'm not saying I know how they felt, but the noise alone. Even though there were like just fireworks, I just thought to myself, like imagine I was in that situation. And then to hear people, and I'm sure there's going to be people watching this that maybe don't agree that they're, 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 they're siding with the oppressors on this. Yeah. And you hear this, you know, narrative being spoken on, on, on the other side. Yeah. That these people are less than human. The Palestinians are less than human. If you ever met a Palestinian, they're the most... I can't, um, hospitable, generous, kind-hearted, full of joy. Like, and then to kind of label a whole, does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know, what, what are your thoughts on this? I kind of went on in a little monologue, yeah, but I don't want to like, because obviously we're not, we're not, we're not really qualified to talk about it on a, you know, there's way more eloquent and more, more knowledgeable people that can talk about this, but we don't want to talk about our experience, right? And, you know, we're enough, well, I've just hit 40, you're not going to reveal your age, bro. But <laughs> like we've been seeing this, this happening. I remember seeing images when I was a child, man. And just being in disbelief, you know, that this is going on. And then, I, and then, you know, people are saying that these, do you see what I'm saying? Like, even as a kid, I remember seeing, do you remember that footage? Oh, Spahn, like, excuse me, the name of the father that was covering his son while they were shooting at him. I don't remember that. Very famous video, bro. So his son's been, like, they're behind the rock. And then they, they killed them both live on television, man. I remember seeing that as a kid, thinking, Spahn, like, look at this. I'm feeling ashamed at that point there as well. You know? I think the sure reality is... Um... Life is sacrosanct, and that's what we believe. And you go back to the eye in the Quran, and as as I said, if you save a life, you'll save the whole of mankind. If you take a life, as though you've taken a life, the whole of mankind. So, life is sacrosanct, it's sacrosanct. Life is, is so important to preserve and to protect. And with that comes, you coined it quite, I say sadly, but truly, you're just looking. And thinking, there's nothing you can do or say. You're just watching. You just you obviously you pray, you make du'a, you you request from uh, the Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to provide, protect, to bring them out of this hardship. And at the same time, you ask to be forgiven for not being able to do more, to support more. And I think um, anyone who says anything. Uh, it's, it's really weird Like you're in a position now where You're seeing on the news you, There's certain people you, You're not allowed to say certain things Or you're going to be held And then you have to be told your rights You're allowed to say You're thinking But I'm just saying life is sacrosanct When I was doing the refugee work uh, With this whole thing that happened um, In Greece um, And the things that you hear there And the trust you But life is sacrosanct Why would you want to take someone's life? You know yeah, And And, and People use the term collateral damage and all this really unfortunate terminology, like, but these are still human lives. They're, they all belong to God. And it's really powerful. I remember um, watching this baker who was, it was in the time of what happened in, the, in Syria. And uh, he was upset. He, said, he was saying, don't you know that when you kill someone, you take their life? There's no connection between, that. they haven't got the ability to worship their Lord anymore. He goes, do you know we're on this earth to worship? Can you imagine in that moment mm. where the bombs are, he's saying, 
don't you realize what you're doing? You're stopping us from worshiping God. Because that's what we're here for. We're here to worship God. We're here to praise Him. Life is sacrificing for, for one of the many reasons, including that. And it's the same thing. You see all these people, they're not a new main dimension about, you know, just the humanity. Just look and go, that's wrong. That's evil. That's oppressive. You know, they had this speaker from Greece saying, this is apartheid. And we know this. And people have said it openly. He said, well, what, why are you continuing for? Because, you know, as someone said once, wherever the authority lies, one is in the time of any of the great nations who ever said they had the power and the authority to do what they wanted, they do what they wanted. But for me as a medic, and seeing life being taken, that is heartbreaking because all you know is how to protect and to nurture life. And I that's think, your role. I mean, you mentioned that you're a medic here. Like, yeah. When you see some of the videos or what's been sent through, medics examining... Imagine you're on the ground there. And, yeah, and, I've, and I've, I've seen some of the not videos. Only, not only does it's a war zone, that hospitals are being being attacked. Bombed. Yeah, you don't have them, you know, because I remember system. you said to me a long time ago that when you're in A and E, you don't think, you act on, right? You kind of deal with them with the situation. So you, the person comes in, is critical, you know, you deal with that matter. You, you don't get your emotions involved. You kind of yeah. like this. I don't want to. Well, I, 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 so I, you I, can so imagine there they're getting these people, you know, coming. There's no way to go. No to go. There's no hospital. But, uh, there's no. I've, I've seen clinicians uh, in some of the videos that have come out examining um, what looks like a child, but, you know, uh, the architecture's charred, the body is mutilated. And in my heart, I'm thinking, you're only listening to the heart because you don't know what else to do. Do, do you understand? And I hope this poor clinician is thinking, you know, Allah bless you, you're only doing this. Because you can't just go, what do you want to do? You, you you make a movement, you make some gesture, and it's like, wow. And there's nothing more that they can do, you know? And I think it's, uh, as a medic, it's painful because you're like, you you have to save life. It doesn't make, if someone, like there's a big thing about someone passing away in hospital. Okay, if it's palliative, or it's end of life, you know, even then you still have to make sure that you do the best for their life, make sure they have a good ending, everything is at peace and everyone's... You know, if someone comes in hospital and they pass away, if you see the amount of inquiries that happen, the amount of questioning, what could have done better? Why does that? And you, you realize it's not because it's not pretentious. It's not, you know, ostentatious. We're doing some important show. It's like life is important. It's, it, it's, it's, I can only use the word sacrosanct. It's pure. You only got one of it. And when you see that life's just been taken, you know, Recklessly, heedlessly, with literally with no reason, and you kind of go, well, "Are we, are we still on the same human playing field? What's going on here?" And you know, I don't think anyone would would disagree with that, unless those who don't believe that life is sacrosanct. You know? Well, the first thing they do is dehumanize. Yeah, so this this and is the way you call it. But this is animals, but if, these people are animals. No, but if you look people... at the if you look at the story of colonialism and going to have nations yeah. and conquering, you have to make the people believe that there's you know uh, dehumanization is part of it, and and also saying they've got no, they've got not. Uh, literally, you remove the, uh, the 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 shield and honor of being a human and saying, well, actually, they're not really they're in any nation what happened in Africa what happened in Asia if you remove that that it's like what, what happened in even in, in slavery yeah, in slavery yeah. they had to dehumanize yeah black people yeah the church like they had to kind of they used the I think the the was it the verses of Cain or to I say that, know, that they were cast out they they're not they're not basically they're trying to say that these people are not human so yeah. therefore, they're, they're property. Well, we we, you know? we but we've seen so that. We, but they we, they couldn't they couldn't. But that was the same process with women, yeah. Even pre-Islamically, yeah. It was they're not really humans. They're animals. We use them for example. And then obviously, Islam can said no. Yeah. Men and women, you know, they're different, but they're equal. And in respect to the you and know, ironically, Hitler did the same thing to the Jews yeah, in yeah. Germany. Yeah, yeah. them. Yeah, absolutely. Same thing. Absolutely. You know. So. But well, they did that. The the the, 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 the come of the of India, they dehumanized them. Yeah, they just you know what did he savages, do? savages, and the there. Native Americans, same thing, same thing. So if you if you because if that, you if if you sorry to interrupt, no, no. Uh, 
Because if if you think that these people are human, there's certain things you can't do. Well, I think your moral compass would be like, you can't do Yeah, he's a wrong. human being. So I'll, the, I'll give an example. So uh, you see an animal get hit in the street when, you know, by a car, whatever, like a fox or you know, your heart, oh man, that was terrible. Now, if you were to use that uh, analogy and see if a child, God forbid, got hit in the street by a car, there'll be commotion. There'll be yeah. upheaval. There'll be chaos. The, what, you know, it, no one, let, and it's like, well, it does, you know, for me, just um, you're silently sick in your stomach and you just, and then, and then what does it do? It makes you reflect about yourself. How can I be better? How can I be more earnest? How can I be thankful for what I've got? How can I be more reflective about my life? How can I be less involved in this delusion of us, you know, uh, uh, pandering to our wants and our needs? And I think it makes you much more, I, if I can quote the hadith of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa he said, remember much the destroyer of life's pleasures. Remember much the destroyer of your life's pleasures. Because people romance all of these activities, death and life and birth. It's not romantic. You could be sitting down, have a stroke. You could trip over and crack your neck. You could get hit by, by something from the sky and, and whatever it is, you know. And I think the more you think like that, and by the way, I'm not saying to think like this from a despairing distressing anxiety driving point it's meant to be to help you self-actuate to be better than you was yesterday you use these tools to be a better person you don't sit there sobbing you say no okay i've got a short period of time on this earth what can i do to make this earth a better place what can i do to make people feel better and feel safe what energy positive energy can i influence on this planet around me and i think that's the key that's the key point obviously what's happening now it is well, like, it makes you like really frustrated inside, but you're like, well, okay, I'm here. What can I do now? And I think doing the good things, even you know the hadith or something about even if on the day of judgment you plant that seed, make the intention, do good. Even if there's a calamity, keep on doing good. Don't stop. Keep on pressing forward. Or have optimism. You know, and and subhanAllah any Yeah. This is the thing, and, and I think for, 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 to kind of kind of cap this conversation off, um, is that if it, if there's anything that we are witnesses, we're not yeah. going to see something done to our brothers and sisters and stay silent. And if this was done to any other people, it would be the same. Absolutely, absolutely. This is this is. Because by the way, wrong. But, this but, is but, but, barbaric. This is disgusting. But, but, but by the way, this is the point, right? And I think this is what people miss the point. We are all created by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We are all belong to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Every single creation, be it those that we can see and those that we can't see, those hidden and those exposed, belong to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So every single facet of life, breathing, eating, sleeping, thinking, belongs to Allah Taala. Henceforth, we don't just say, oh, you know, it's because of them being from a particular faith group. No, every life section. But we are just and we are firm and we're fair and we're upright against everyone. We don't just pick and choose who we want to support. And subhanAllah, if you see anyone in distress, you're not going to say, excuse me, are you, do you believe in God? You're going to go to him, support them. What do you need? Are you okay? Are you in distress? How can I be there for you? Someone falls on the street and go, oh, I'm going to help them because they don't like the believers. It doesn't work like that. Because we see every single person as a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I had this conversation with some of my trainees when I said to them, and again, and people might think it's a little bit weird when I say this, but I said to them, do you know that we're all related? And that the, 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 uh, you know, the, obviously from a certain background and it didn't click to them what I was saying. And I said to them, do you believe in, you know, do, what is your belief? And they're all, we, you know, we believe in, in Christianity. I said, well, 
do you believe in Adam and Eve being the first creation on earth? And we believe that as well. I said, you know, actually, we're even more connected than that because at one point the whole earth was covered in water, right? In the time of Noah, I said, yeah. I said, so that means even we have even close in genetics because there was the only people that was left behind was the people of Noah, right? I said, yeah. I said, so do you know we're all brothers and sisters? I said, we're all one family. So when I see you in pain, I'm in pain. And it pangs me to see you kill someone else or hurt someone else or oppress somebody else. And I'll defend that person. And I think that's the point. People don't realize uh, if some if someone is hurt somewhere or, 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 or in a difficult situation, we don't go, to, oh, it's not my problem. We see that person as another member of your family. Yeah. And even, subhanAllah, any, this whole thing about, uh, you know, mankind, is the, it all belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we're witnessing now is obviously aggression against those who believe in Allah. That's the difference. And I think that's why we get sick in our stomach because they are the people who actually, if you put authority in their hands, they would protect the whole earth. They would look, look at the time of the, uh, of when Islam was in a place of authority. Everyone went to them. The Jews used to go to them for protection. The Jewish women used to go to the Islamic states and, 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 and ask of the imams to get uh, put their husband under pressure to pay for the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the rights of the women and the children. Who, whenever Islam was in a place of, 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 and I'm talking about sincere Islam, not this, uh, you know, this, this monopoly that you see in later ages where it became a kingship and a queenship. I'm talking about the sincere Islam. People were protected and guarded and loved and cared for, and people felt safe in those environments. And I think that's the issue. They don't realize if you put authority in the hands of those who truly fear Allah who truly believe in God, who truly believe in this, this belief that everyone belongs to God and everyone should be given ease and, and safety, they'll be at ease, they'll be at safety, bro. And I think that's the reality. Even Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimullah, he said in one statement, God will never protect a, a unjust Islamic society, but God will protect a just non-Islamic society. Do you see? Yeah. You heard that statement before? No, I think I do. I think I have. So, Danny, if a society is run on targut behavior, on oppressive behavior, unjust behavior, they might be Muslim, but even Timmy said Allah won't, 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 won't protect them. Well, look at the, the look at this. Why why did our parents come here? Because our nations were unjust, and this was justice. But, but you see, but Subhanallah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so long story. <sighs> so, to all the Palestinian people, listen. Like, I'm not arrogant enough to f believe that, you know, you're all going to watch this or whatever, but, and to everyone who's watching, know that we stand with the Palestinians and we we pray and, and that they are lifted from this and keep their, keep their will strong. I'm not sure they're very strong people. And, um, May Allah give them victory, inshallah, yeah. and in whatever, and, and keep them safe. Yeah. And um, yeah. So, Amir, it's a very long uh, introduction uh, to the podcast. But we're back in the studio. It's been a long while. Uh, thank you for coming today, by the way. I know you're busy. Um, will you say you're busy? <laughs> But today's uh, topic, because I, I think we've, we've been putting it off for a long time. Um, uh, we want to talk about testosterone. Okay, it's a big subject. And I think we're not really going to cover everything in this in this podcast. Um, and I think that uh, we'll probably do a few. Yeah. Yeah. But today we're just going to go. We're going to dip our toes a little bit. So why don't we just start off with what is testosterone? So testosterone is um, a hormone and it's found in both men and women. They call it the male dominant hormone because in terms of levels and amounts is mainly found in men. Even so Zach. Well, I need to use Zach's blood test to verify <laughs> he actually is got testosterone. What in about him, man? 
Imran, I'm, I'm dubious at times, but yes, I think he has got. It's been, <laughs> it's been a, it's a lot of training recently. Bro. <laughs> so testosterone is is generally mainly found in men. It's a messenger hormone. What about animals? Obviously, yes. Yeah. So when we talk about species, it's found in every species. Seriously? Yeah, estrogen. Well, most mammal species. Mammal, okay. Um, and it, so, so if you look at men and women, so it's probably, I like to say, it's about 100 times more in men than women in terms of amounts. But they do have the same function in both men and women. And the hormone testosterone is used by the body on several, for several reasons. As I mentioned, it's a messenger hormone, so it goes around telling the body to do certain things. The, in terms of, actually, it's one of the promoters of male dominant genital productivity, so uh, rather uh, um, development from childhood. And we'll talk about it as well another time because that's an important um, uh, historical point about certain analogs, uh, types of drugs that were found out to have benefit because of certain nations that didn't have a particular uh, uh, um, part of the algorithm in their systems which affects the development of their genitalia based on the fact that testosterone couldn't convert to another hormone. That's another topic we can talk about. It's a really deep topic and it's really amazing the way they figured it out. So it helps with development of certain core features of the men, namely the genitalia, so you know. you're talking about in the womb? Um, yes, in the womb, productivity in the womb, obviously. Um, and then obviously f uh, another spike in the pubertal stage as well. Yeah. Um, it also has effects on development of skeletal muscle, so muscle mass, development of bone and strengthening of bone tissue through what's known as bone mineral density. Uh, it has effects on the cardiovascular system in terms of dilating vessels and, and blood flow. Has the effect on one's cognition in terms of the uh, the ability to think, and uh, um, it also facilitates dopamine release in the brain. So that kind of like um, pleasure states and states of mind. Um, it also has effects on uh, um, visceral organs, so fat deposition and the loss of fat and the mobilization of fat. So it's got loads and loads of effects, uh, and to a lesser extent in women. Women's main hormone being estrogen, which is also found in men, which has got a vital role in bone productivity and bone protection. So bone protection, not bone productivity, but bone protection to, to, is the main one for men. And it has loads and loads and loads of points to be used in women and how women use the estrogen hormone. Again, as a menstrual hormone at certain times in their cyclical periods, as well as their whole body gen, uh, their body composition, in terms of their skin architecture, the sweating, the mood, and the like thereof. So testosterone has a very, very important role in the development of a man in terms of their body composition, their thought processes, their basic wiring, and their skeletal activity. So, like, what's the importance of it in, in, in men? So why is it important and how how does that... So you, you talked about all this, but give us real life examples in the way... So why don't we look at what happens when a man becomes deficient or insufficient in testosterone? The energy levels fall. When we say energy levels fall, it's not a dramatic fall. Every single hormone, including vitamin D, which they call vitamin, it's a pro-hormone actually, when it becomes deficient or insufficient, your body will respond a certain way, will have a certain uh, um, outcome. Uh, and most of them, you get fatigue and tiredness and lethargy, right? But with testosterone, the tiredness isn't just, a, I haven't got energy. Your whole body feels run down because it's also affecting the development of muscle. It also has an effect on... Uh, a, a reduced fat reduction, so you, you're rather the uh, the fat deposition becomes excessive because your body can't actually mobilize that fat. Cognitive impairment, you feel what they refer to as brain fog, 
So you're just already tired and your brain's a little bit full and you sleep quite easily. So you become nearly narcoplexic, you just kind of fall asleep at will. Uh, productivity goes down excessively. And then you've got the other, you know, important features that people don't talk about and they only mention it intermittently is libido. So not only do you have issues with arousal for having sexual interactions, you also have problems with the delivery of that arousal, i.e. the erectile function, that becomes denuded as well. Mm -hmm. So then that actually has a, a, a compounding effect on one's uh, uh, mood yeah, yeah. because now they can't perform with their spouse or their partner, whoever it is, and they feel that they're obviously unable to do so. It also becomes discord between them and their partner, the partner thinking maybe you've got someone else that you're not telling me about. And I can't really tell you about my testosterone levels alone. It doesn't make any sense to them. So can I ask, so mm. when, so like, I'm guessing when you're born, so this is for male, your testosterone levels go like like this, right? So mm. puberty, there are, it's, and then when, when, so let's talk about what happens during, when your testosterone level starts creeping up during your teens. Okay. So how does that affect your body? and? Cause I've got teenagers at home, yeah. Yeah. So I can see it, but yeah. like, what what is it that how how does that affect them? So, if you think about these young men growing, they're obviously their their sexual arousal levels go up, so they're easily more uh, uh, attracted to the opposite sex. And so hence they're like, when in a time they'll be like, they could see this person as a play partner, they're actually thinking, I actually have feelings for her now. They don't know why. Uh, they become slightly more aggrieved easily um, because they're unable to uh, manage their thought processes because they become overwhelmed. They don't realize that um, they become more risk-taking because the test levels are going up. And that's why men die earlier than women. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. they they take more risk because yeah. they think they can manage. I think the best describe. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, about caffeine, yeah. Mm. So they were saying if you used to give a child caffeine, and you give an adult caffeine, so for example, yeah. So if you gave a child caffeine, they wouldn't know what to do with it because they've got all this energy, but. They're not quite sure what's going on. So the word is naive. That's right. So your body is naive to it. Exactly. So this so happens to young have men. This surge of yeah. Testosterone goes so up. So whereas an adult, they know that they've got ways of yeah, facilitating facilitating that, that yeah, extra yeah. energy. Absolutely. So, so are you saying the same with testosterone? Absolutely. Yeah. So these kids, um, they also become much more in terms of the basal metabolic rate. They get more hotter easily. So you might see these boys walking in boxer shorts all the time. Like, put some clothes on. Like, I'm just always yeah, hot. Topless. Yeah, topless yeah. in the bed, sleeping naked. They don't, they kick well, the blankets. Sleeping naked because it's not. So my enough. apologies, but um, as in they're, 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 <laughs> they're, they're less stressed than they should be. When they were younger, they were having their pajamas. Now they're like walking around their boxer shorts and they don't, they don't always like they're, they're actually burning up. In winter, you can see those quite easily. The windows are open, the fans on, and like, what is wrong with these guys? Because their BMR has gone up, their basal metabolic rate has gone up. Um, their thinking processes have gone sometimes unwired, unhinged. So, they get a, so bad decision making. Yeah. Yeah. And they need a little more guidance. Obviously, you've got all the other activities: the sweating, the pores, the facial hair, the uh, uh, you know the acne spots, spots yeah. in terms of development of acne because obviously the oil skin productivity. Then you've got obviously again waking up with uh, 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 you know morning erections again as part of that process, um, and well, also not going uh, down at all. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So yeah. They're, they're they're struggling, yeah. and don't forget with the productivity of testosterone, it has an impact on the productivity of sperm as well. So your testes are constantly becoming you know engulfed. Super fertile. Bro, yeah. Bro, so bro. The, when, when does that stop? It doesn't actually until your test levels start falling. Okay. Yeah. So you're technically you're f you can fertilize at many at any age. You know, even in your elderly ages, which is you know the difference, right, between men and women. The women have even women. after you're dead, isn't it? I I don't know if you can collect. No, 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 no. Listen, yeah. listen. I think I think I have seen. Some no, no. Right. I heard I heard that. Um, like. Like a certain amount of time. Yeah, you have to have after some time you've passed away. Where the testes are still got yeah. some kind of 
heating <laughs> mechanism <laughs> left or keeping homeostasis. Extracting it is yeah. a whole different story, yeah. Well, but, they use um, certain probes in anyway. Am I right in saying that? Did you tell me? You told me this, man. So there are ways, unfortunately. Oh, we don't want to like... Yeah, this uh, is... Yeah. A, but this uh, is like, okay. After midnight conversation. Right, after midnight. <laughs> yeah. But um, so what, what you find with these young men... Um, what about again, stress as well? Yes, I was going to get to. So, um, so yeah, again, so henceforth... Not only the uh, uh, erectile excessiveness that they have, ejaculant productivity. So these are these are young men who wake up. Oh You're throwing God. a lot of words at me here, bro. So they they. Like I'm trying to think. We're, to we're myself. talking about how do you how do you say? I know it? what ejaculates are, bro. Yeah. So they're basically waking up. I, I, I know what that wet is. dreams. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and and yeah ha- and I have to tell you why because we're not very good you know at coaching. Our parents are going to watch this. Yeah. But this is the point. We're not very good at coaching them. We can coach them a lot of things about explain to them. It's okay. It's a process that's happening. Yeah. And when you put things into place, like scientifically, like even with the women's ovulatory stages, why they feel a certain way, premenstrually, yeah. postmenstrually, perimenstrually, you know, why they feel like that. And they can actually understand that you can actually gauge a person's. So, you know, you know obviously girls at that age, they go through, the, they get the menstrual period. The Red yeah, Queen yeah. comes and visits, yeah. Um, Such a polite way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the boys are actually going through the same thing. Except no, it's, it's different. It's, uh, women's cyclical periods are really, I think. So they, so, so. I tell you something, you cannot. The women's hormonal cycle is something amazing. Mm. If you look at the science behind it, it's mind boggling. And you can see why they become really sometimes. They, they, uh, Watch your they, words carefully. No, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say to you, they, they, their character <laughs> change is sometimes quite dramatic. Yeah. And unless you yourself, um, so no, I'll never do this, obviously, but if we had a a multiverse, I'd say, right, I'm going to take you, I'm going to give you a dose of estrogen, give you a dose of progesterone, give you a dose of testosterone, and I'm going to gauge your character and I'll film you doing it. You'd be like, who in God's name are these multiple personalities that I'm going through? And this is why when I look at the um, the female cyclical hormonal periods even at medical school it took a very long time for people to get taught this process i actually picked it up quite quickly because i thought this is you know something is quite amazing i actually i reflect i look into and i look how it works and the way the body architecture changed the way the uh, um the the pelvic organs change in response to this is something amazing it is ap- and it happens most of the time because you have got patients who've got variances in the yeah. menstrual period. I know this was about TRT, but I think it's important to understand that women have their own hormonal imbalances that need support as well. It happens monthly, like clockwork. So they're going menopause. through puberty every month, basically, for men. I, I wouldn't say puberty. They're going through, the, the initiation would be puberty for them, but they're going through hormonal ch- changes monthly, which we as men will see gradually in the begin in the beginning and then maintains plateaus at a certain amount and then gradually comes off. So and what I did. meant was initially that 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 when you hit puberty. A spike. That spike. Imagine you were having that every single month as a man. No, no, but no, I know no. it's more complex than that. No, Tim, because because <laughs> If that was the case, I don't think we'd be able to survive as a nation. That's what I'm saying. We'd be killing each other because, all the time, Because, because yeah. the, the difference between testosterone and estrogen, there are major differences in terms of the way that the physiology works in the body, including the way the cognition systems work. Um, generally, testosterone is linked also to your behavioral patterns. So um, not, not, not super physiological doses because we don't study that. We don't look at that, and we, but we can see what happens when you take too much testosterone and you go over overboard, especially with certain underground pre- preparations. We can talk about another occasion, which obviously we're not in any shape, way, or form supporting. We're actually against that. They change their behavior patterns dramatically, and they actually become instinctively much more overwhelmingly aggressive. When you look at testosterone replacement therapy, they become more assertive. So, so let, let's go back to thing. Yeah. So testosterone. Puberty wise, it spikes. Kids start getting aggressive. Not aggressive, like, not but, aggressive. But, but you're, 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 you're more. I think, I think be careful because we don't want to associate this with aggression. What we're saying is they don't know how to manage this extra energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so things frustrate them when they should be. To- and exactly, this is why, really back into training, why they should be in some type of sport activity, which I really love the American system for, where they've got everyone in some kind of sports. On a regular basis, especially for, for young men and young women, but also young men, and they need to be transcripted into these kind of activities from an early age. So then, 
when it starts coming through, weightlifting, wrestling, boxing, swimming. But how does that affect their test levels? And, and so, uh, it, it, when, when okay, so this is going to is be it more expending that this, extra? This, this, this is this is going to be paradoxical. Okay, so if you do activities which engage your posterior chamber, being your back, your bum, your hamstrings, your calves, all of those muscles, testosterone levels go up. Right. Okay. What we're talking about isn't the actual testosterone. And yes, testosterone can also go down if you weight cut badly, if you get head injuries. There's, there's loads of things that can happen. We saw women who lost their immensities completely when they were training for the Olympics because they didn't, they were cutting weight too much. And the same for men. If you have a lot of weight cutting, that can actually put pressure on your, on your what's called the HPA axis. So that's the way the brain talks to the testes and the testes produce testosterone. So that axis can be affected. Striking the head multiple times. So boxers, later on in life, they get problems with testosterone more earlier than the average adult. Certain drugs, um, so regular painkillers right. like cocodium or codidrum or codeine-based drugs, opioids have an effect. There's all these other, the point Bro, is- It's crazy because I was watching ballers. Have you seen ballers, bro? Uh, the Rock. Um... The Rock, so, so it's a show about American footballers and The Rock plays this agent who's an ex-footballer or whatever, or American football player. So he's having problems with Little Rock, mm. yeah? But he's never like, he want, basically he's damaged his hip. He's been popping painkillers. Yeah, so opioids have a yeah. massive effect. It's funny huge, how you just mentioned it. There's now. a huge story behind that. And yeah. obviously we're looking at the evidence for it even more now. But the point I'm getting at is the test levels can be affected inadvertently by reducing or increasing the levels for activity. However, it is the outcome from the testosterone being raised that we le we need to expend. So if you put a young adult training two, three hours a day, six days a week, they've got nothing else to put that energy into. They're absolutely lethargic, they're tired, they've come home, they're shattered, they have a shower, they go to sleep. What we're trying to remind people is you don't want these young men with all this energy as a consequence of their testosterone being enhanced because don't forget, test has a direct impact on something called CAMP which is a, a, a cyclic, a, 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 oh my God, adenosine methyl uh, phosphate, I think it is, AMC. So it's, it's an energy marker and it also has an effect on nitric oxide in your body, which helps with vasodilation. So it has, so basically all the facets to make you more stronger, faster, quicker, it's pumping all of those systems through, okay? So now you want to put them through a process to harbor that energy because if you don't, it's going to be reared into the wrong energy. Maybe getting involved in certain activities outside, gangs, uh, um, doing, I don't know, recreational things that are inappropriate. Because also depression, bro. Depression, yeah. Like they can have anxiety. Anxiety. Issues with their mindfulness. Because they don't realize why they're getting so upset and frustrated and no one's giving that advice to them. And I think if you can, that, again, Exercise, swimming, running, wrestling, boxing, well, maybe not so much boxing, striking, but within within reason. Um, all the activities we're talking about, especially grappling, that will nail the energy levels. These young men have to be training regularly, if even if possible, twice a day. Honestly, before school, when they finish school, come back, train again. You shouldn't allow them the ability to divulge We've got so much access now to the internet in terms of social media activities, all this rubbish online, these, these, you know, these uh, morons who are making videos and morons. what do they call them? Content something? These people, Content creators, yeah. God forbid they even exist any further. I mean, and, and, so. sitting next to one, bro. <laughs> Shut up, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm Shut sure getting at? Do you know, do you know, no, well, I'll give you an example, yeah? Um, I, I don't know how to use my phone very well, right? So obviously I had to ask Muhammad to help me today <laughs> with my Google camera. <laughs> I had a meeting with one of the professors. First he said Google camera, bro. Is it Google, was Google, Google Meet? Sorry Google, sorry, Google Meet, apologies. So I'm thinking if we were younger and we didn't have any access to training and all we had was access to all of these devices, I think there would be a lot more horrific outcomes with the people around us. And again, that's what I'm talking about. So testosterone has this impact and you have to manage it. Uh, and, and yeah, and so I told our patients who, well, I did when I was working with TRT in the past, I'm back on it now, that you will feel that youth, that energy, that productivity, you won't be aggressive, you'll be assertive because you've got wisdom in your actions now. 
and um, you'll be able to, as you say, direct the energy appropriately. Can we just go for the through line, bro? Because that's yeah. that's that's you, mm. you, that's the we're gonna land in that Eventually, in that topic, yeah. yeah. But so so we've got the whole puberty stage. We understand. Look, um, so so what, you make a lot of mistakes. You make a lot of mistakes. But the thing is, this 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 hormone is for, for it's surging through the surging system. Surging through the system. Yeah. Then when do you start evening out? So, prob- no, so again, when does puberty stop, bro? So this is the point, right? So you're talking between. 18- I'm still probably going through it, bro. <laughs> you're talking between eighteen and twenty-one. You're okay. Talking about, you're talking about um, when the epiphyseal growth plates stop moving. Is that when pu- when does te- when's te- the marker to so that right puberty has stopped? So the the, the I mean, there's, there's probably oh, lots okay. of schools of thought, but yeah. in but what I've understood of it is when certain growth patterns stop. So I can't make you grow anymore. Right. I can't make you develop anymore. I'm not talking about cognitively. I'm not talking about emotionally. I'm talking about physiologically. Yeah. Your kidneys can't get any more optimal. Your liver can't get any bigger. Your heart can't. Well, your heart could probably pump harder. But I'm talking about, I think the skeletal framework is key. Because if your bones haven't developed and I'm, and, and they're still growing, then technically you haven't finished puberty. Right, okay. Yeah, unless so when, you've when, got, is that, when does that happen? Between 18 and 21. So you could stop growing at 18? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they talk the about person. 21. I mean, prob- I mean, there's probably, I'd say between, yeah, 18 and 21, probably 18 would be the majority of people stop at that point. So does it, does the effect, so I'm guessing when puberty starts, the effects are quite high and then it starts to dull down. You don't see those kids in year 90, year 11, they just go from like a five foot one yeah. to like six foot two. And you're like, where did you I remember in? one summer, bro. Okay. You just grew. Bro, I used to get, Crazy pains in my shin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know you're being stretched. Oh my! It was. So... Did you have that, Zach? Zach's. I think it was Zach's I, I, nose. I used to have nipple pain, bro. No, oh, yeah, was, nip, I, my... yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was nipple Zach's nipple. nose got really big. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and his toenails. <laughs> you, know, Zach, you, know, Zach, you know Zach? Yeah, you know Zach. Like he was short. I can believe it. Like in, in, in primary, you were you were you were average height, yeah, maybe average. below average, bro. Yeah. Like. I told you a lot of these kids. And then up. I think year eight, year nine, like he was about, he started to get. And then I think, when did you start really getting tall, bro? Probably I don't year know, 10. Man. Probably, year 10. yeah, probably end of, end year of school. 10, probably. You're about 6'2 now, aren't it? No, 6'1. 6'1, yeah. Yeah. So I'll give an example. Like, how many kids have got in our club? I'll mention their names. I don't know, you know, yeah. may Allah bless them. They were like little popcorns. Yeah. They're like six plus now. You're like, yeah. And you didn't expect it from them. Yeah. Is it all the same? But like, you know, you hear those stories of like, I remember it was always interesting when you have summer break here in school and you come come back back. in September and everyone's like, full beard and stuff. I remember there was one, (laughs) but people were looking at me like, what the hell happened to you? Because I I went from, I think it was when I was 13, that summer, but. When I say my mom had to wrap up my my, my shins, yeah, put believe. Vicks on it, like I deep. Can I can it was so, and when I, you don't realize it's happening. And then when you go back to school, you, you're like one of the tallest guys there, bro. It's yeah, like. Yeah, yeah but yeah. What, what, what about those guys that um, they're in year eight, but they look like your dad? That's a, <laughs> the, the, those are guys with dodgy what, his passports. Dad specifically? Or no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they got dodgy passports. <laughs> no, nah, real talk, bro. There was this Pakistani boy in my class, bro. He looked like he was 50. I was looking like he had a bigger beard than me. I only had like a moustache. Mm. That's the, um, that's the, uh, Salon and, uh, Rossi, bro. <laughs> that will mm. give you something. Like, you said, telling me halba, you know halba, what's that? Fenugreek. A fenugreek, It's yeah. full of testosterone. Right? Um, it's a testosterone um, booster. Booster, right? Yeah. That's full, like in, in, I know Middle Eastern food and, mm. I know you guys use. So uh, you've got, you've got like all these, what we refer to as test boosters, which actually affect the pulse of the, pulsatile activity of the glands in the brain, which is the messenger signal that tells the testicles to produce testosterone or sperm or inhibit B or any of these other hormones that we're looking at based on which part of the testes they hit. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> <laughs> I've got so many questions, bro. Yeah. Let's st- stick to the developmental stage, yeah? Is it possible if you had a kid, yeah, and you're like, all right. Someone did do this, go on. Like, I'm going to do an experiment on this gonna kid. I'm going to give him loads of Dynabol. No, 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 no okay. not, not steroids, not steroids. Okay. But I'm saying, I'm saying, like, you want this guy to be a basketball player, bro, for example. Okay, so Is there yeah, things so, you can, like... Yeah, unfortunately, they are, yeah. I'm not so, talking about surgically, yeah? No, no, no. Not no. even, like, medically. Because, yeah, because we, we, uh, interesting enough, surgically, you can make someone taller. 
I've seen these like but, but, leg but, breaking yeah, things. Yeah, like it's called bone lengthening. lengthening. You can yeah. go from like five eight <laughs> <laughs> to six six two. No, it's like yeah. But what happens to the top part of your body? Though? So no, what, what they do is it's, it's, <laughs> put put the camera on me. <laughs> See that long cut. legs, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so my, my problem is I've got, I've got a long torso anyway. I've got short legs. I've got my mum's family's torso. They're all six plus. I've got my dad's short legs. It's like Lego when you, put you know, legs you know, someone there. said to me, he goes, he goes, well, like, you actually look like a gorilla from behind. Yeah, you've got you little do, legs you do, you do. and you're like this when you yeah. run. <laughs> um, no, so they, this, they did that to Messi, no? Yeah, so I was going to get to, I was going to bring that up. So anyway, with bone lengthening, what they do is they separate the bone in the femur, the tibia and the fibula. So, so you but that wasn't my question them. though. Anyway, but carry on. But yeah, so can you see, even without using hormones. But could what, you feed them specific types of unfortunately, food? Unfortunately, not. F- or stretch them out and stuff no, no, like that. But, okay. There's limited evidences on that kind of stuff. But if you actually gave them a hormone, the hormone you want to give them. Okay, let, let, me, let me rephrase it, Rob, yeah. Say, <laughs> you so go, you, you, I'll go you, back in time. No, no, no. So say, say you did You're like, right, I want to breed athletes, bro. Yes. Yeah. So you might be athletic. Like you might be an athletic person like myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm joking. But let's say that someone's like 6'2 or whatever. Yeah. And then he goes and finds another woman, bro. And you, you basically go and find a woman who's like six foot. My like dad's six okay. foot five. Okay. Yeah, you start kind of like almost breeding. So, so what you're doing is I've, like, I've, like, who is it that had the dad's a basketball player and their mom's like a swimmer, bro? Come some, oh, yeah. I've got his name, man. Okay, so like all his brothers, yeah, they're like giants. It's basically, bro. like a uh, drago. Bo Nickel. Is it Bo Nickel? It's not. His mom's a Judoka or something called. Yeah, cool. his dad's a wrestler. His mom's a... So, so, but the issue here is. You'd need at least three, four, five generations, okay. because you're not thinking about skip generation. You're not thinking about meiosis. About uh, um, what's meiosis? So my, uh, not meiosis. Oh my god, transfer of mito- mitochondria. So there's 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 genetic processes that can happen. We're just thinking about X Y X X here, but there's other ways you can get genetic genetic material transferred. Oh my god, I'm going back to my A level days, uh, bio, biochemistry days in med school. So there, there's different methodologies. But the point I'm getting at is. You're, you're looking at keeping a bloodline in terms of an athletic bloodline. If I go to the thing about Krypton, <laughs> called the Guild, and the way they make their right. bloodline a certain way. The point I'm getting at is, if you were to use science, and you can get the corrected genetic code material, and you had some superior codex system that can tap into that, then yeah, probably you could make it. But the reality is, you might get, well, like in Twins, yeah. Do you remember? <laughs> you might get Danny DeVito. I mean, you know. <laughs> Cam- camera, camera. <laughs> no. so, <laughs> so, yeah, so did you see something getting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean Elmo and Big Bird? That's it, bro. That's it. He's grouch, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. I live in the trash can. <laughs> um, but so the development of test in terms of the effect testosterone has is, is, is overwhelming. But again. So, you- so, going back to genetics quickly, we're going to move on because it's quite yeah. fascinating, bro. Yeah. Like if Okay, so just 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 to add on what Zach was saying about Messi. Yeah. He was actually um so I've I've actually dealt with a child who was given growth hormone from an endocrinologist because it's really short. So you're meant to be also referred to as your interparental height. So you should really be a height between your mother and your father on av- on average. But we don't know if your mother's got brothers and sisters who are short, who are really, really tall, you know. And so you you look at what's called the inter- interparental height, and your kids are usually based between that those heights. Um, he was really, really short. And with growth hormone, I think he got to about 5'7 or 5'8. So how was we, like... He would have been about probably 5 foot, maybe 4'11. <laughs> so what's, so, what's considered yeah. a dwarf? But what's 5 foot, bro? Like That's 8 inches shorter than me. <laughs> no, but like, as a full-grown adult, bro, how, how tall is your mom? My dad is about 5 foot. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, oh, right. That's small, bro. So if my dad got growth hormone when he was uh, a kid, he would have been about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, but the thing is, again, back then, how much hormones you're giving? But growth hormone doesn't like, affect height, does it? It does. It does. Point. Yeah. So have you heard of, okay, so you remember- But you remember, have to give it to them when they're growing, right? Yes. The point is giving it afterwards because once your growth plates are sealed, it's like saying once the doors are closed, uh, you can't come in. Okay. Yeah, you can knock as hard as you want, no one's going to let you in. So who who remembers um, 
<laughs> members. <laughs> Um, who's that giant from WWF? Oh, Andre the Giant. Yeah, so he yeah. had a condition where he had a mass in his brain. Uh, called, <laughs> I don't know what he's laughing about. Yeah, you have a, a mass in the brain of a particular part of the brain, which is called the pituitary gland, which produces this hormone. The actual illness is called acromegaly. And in children, it's called gigantism. Right. And so these are kids are like, like through the roof. And um, to sustain that, you would actually obviously operate to remove the lesion in, in the brain. But is there, we talked about this already. Yeah? So I was like going to say, offline. so in terms of, yeah. We've spoke about it so many times, bro. But like, um, it's just fast. So, you know, so, so, so by the way, you grow proportionately. So, okay, so yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is what I was trying to. So, so growth is not linear in terms of every one hormone. So there's another there's another particular function, of what it, there's another particular, call it hormone or uh, um key messenger called cytochrome P450, which deals with the productivity of, of certain cancers in the body. We call proto-oncogenes or, or oncogenesis, and, and they, they have got certain functions in the body. And But in growth, it's key in development. You know, it's key in development of the baby. And from what I recall from my med school, when I was doing genetics, there was a talk about this particular... Um, you know, transcription messenger, if it was left on and it didn't stop, I think at a certain age, I think it's either in utero or a certain, maybe one or two years old, I can't remember it was. If it wasn't switched off, remember the lecturer saying, how big do you reckon you could get? And obviously people talking about, you know, 10 foot, 12 foot, he goes, no. He actually said, quote unquote, because I used to watch this program, the size of Battlestar Galactica, which is basically USS's Enterprise, the spaceship. And I was like, and then you start remembering stories of the prophets. People yeah, because I was ask, do you reckon it is possible to that there would have been giants? But that 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 that's what comes to mind when he mentioned. I was like, so there must have been the cult of people maybe tens of thousands of years ago that were giants. So then my question is, if I had a giant woman, yeah. <laughs> no, go on. No, no, hear me out though. Yeah, go on. Because you got a giant woman. What's considered a giant though? So she, like, like that Chinese guy in uh, No, no, I'm China. saying I'm saying I'm size, of building, yeah, size of building, bro. Yeah, size of building. Size of building. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm talking about giants, bro. Go on. Okay. Godzilla like. <laughs> what, what, what what are we saying then? We're saying you yeah. said the style but, but yeah, so you're so. laughing at but he said battle style galactica, bro. That's what? not real though. But no, but the <laughs> point is this, <laughs> is, the this is this is what the lecturer said. Now, I'm talking about if you were to just switch it on even Yeah, on. yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying this, yeah. It's gonna be a really it's, it's fine, just say it. Just so, say so. It. Okay, my question is this. Just say it. So you had a really big woman. Yeah. Yeah. A really big guy. No, you got a really big woman. She's she falls pregnant. Is that baby gonna be big? Well, how did she Does get pregnant sense? though? Mm. Am I making sense when I'm saying I hear, this? Who's saying? Who's saying? Yeah. So the reproduction. Does that baby look... come out like my size? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? If to you? she was about 15, 20 foot, probably, yeah. But was so it's proportionate, right? But oh, wait, wait, okay. wait, 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 wait. Do you, do you hear what did I'm saying? I know it sounds so stupid. I'll, 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 did she I'll, get I'll, impregnated by a giant man, though? She doesn't exist, but <laughs> let's say she did. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So the point is, so look at her organs, right? Her heart would be probably the size of this room. <laughs> her ovaries would be probably the size of us yeah, guys, okay, yeah? Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah? Do you see? Okay. Like, look, look, just, I know, just, look, just, I know just, you're a doctor. Just we're just humoring this. No, no, but I'm saying, just look at the animal kingdom, right? I mean... If a bear is with another bear and the bears are like nine foot, ten foot tall when they stand up, they're not going to give birth to like a, a bear that's like, you know, you know, boo boo. <laughs> hey, boo boo. It's going to be a big bear. It's going to be your size. <laughs> gonna, <laughs> when it comes up, it'll be my size. <laughs> so it'll be over generations. Yeah. Isn't it? You, you, or, or look at a whale, a sperm whale, right? Yeah. <laughs> Coin the, coin the term yeah. sperm whale They're humongous yeah, yeah. If they get out of a sperm whale They're not going to give birth to a dolphin also, also another thing Like Have you seen basketball players bro And American football players mm. yeah, they're, they're big they're, specimens they're aren't they're they? big, so, like, so, so like in America They make them big bro They're huge No they're not making big bro they're, This is the difference right? What is it then No 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 They don't make it big They find them Specific to that sport yeah, I know, yeah, I know, I know, but what, so, like, but they're being, they're there though. Is it, yeah, but isn't it the food? 
No, no, Habib is not. I swear oh. that Big what Mac's alive. Genetics, like? isn't it? Okay, so look at Francis Ngannou, yeah? He's massive, yeah? yeah? Look at Shaq O'Neal, huge, yeah? So it's genetics. There's a genetic preponderance there, as well as environmental factors. But, but, but think about how massive Shaq is, bro. I bet, I bet big up Zach, Shaq, bro. But if you, are you taller than Kevin Hart, bro? <laughs> He's five six, bro. Okay, six, so, uh, five six, yeah. So he's about. I'm two inches shorter than me. Okay, he's two. So bring up Kevin Hart and and and. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna AI generate this image and put a mirror in there, bro. <laughs> Type in Kevin Hart, Shaq O'Neal, bro. Yeah, and that guy Yao Ming as well. Broski, that, that looks guy's fake. bigger. That guy's bigger than Shaq yes. O'Neal. and he's Chinese as well, bro. So this guy's, uh, he looks proportionate. So Shaq, that looks if Shaq, fake. But if Shaq wasn't standing next to him, yeah, he looks proportionate. He looks normal. So the problem there now is, is this just a skip generation or is it that he's got a hormonal imbalance? Now, usually- But he doesn't look like- as I was going to say, so I'm learning yeah. the squeeze. But the point I'm getting at is that guy, that Chinese fella- Yeah, Yao yeah, Ming. Yao yeah, Ming, he, he probably hasn't got that. So he's maybe just- Truly is a skip generation. It's just intriguing. Because Chinese right? people are not really tall. Well, it yeah. depends which part of China. North China, they're, they're known for their height. Henceforth, their system was a kicking system called... Um, Sorry? The Chinese oh, kicking um, system. Oh, sh 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 um, Shins of Wii or something. No, no, no. no, no. It's um, a very famous style. It's like kickboxing. Yeah, but it's just kicking. Oh, it's just kicking. Yeah, it's a not, not, not shout... Uh, bloody hell. It was a really good kicking system. And it was because most of their fighters were from the North. Yeah. And the Northerners are known to be tall, elegant, strong. Shansin, Shansin? Is it Sanda? Sanda. Sanda, so that is. Shanchu, yeah. Something like that, Shanchu, yeah. The Northerners were stocky, short, were known for like Wing Chun, Southern Praying Mantis, you know, Iron Wire Mantle, that kind of stuff. So you can see a divide now. Is Same that why North you did it? <laughs> <laughs> no, he did the other one. No, he did Praying Mantis, bro. Did yeah, he did I, I got a black belt in Taekwondo. Well, don't go there, yeah. <laughs> show, us your, show us the thing, bro. The what? The 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 stunts. <laughs> yeah. One more time, please, bro. You brother. <laughs> um, yeah, Koreans are quite tall as well. Yeah, bro. again, Koreans are very yeah. tall. Japanese, obviously, if you look at the Inuit. What about Iranians? They're a mixed bunch, have you? Mm. So you got the Northerners who are quite tall. You got the Southerners who are quite tall. It's it's a mixed bunch. The most of the Iranian team, apart from the, the lightweights, are about six foot plus. What about Bengalis, bro? To be fair, I've seen a lot of tall Bengalis recently. Where? You said a lot. You said a lot. You just went a lot. Someone. <laughs> you know the shortest the shortest uh, race is Asians. What do you mean Asians? I just googled it, bro. Asians as in in, in the world. So when you say Asian, Southeast, oh, Southeast are you man? so no, that's not Southeast. No. Yo, what are you then? East Asian, He's East Asian. You're West Asian. No, he's South Asian. <laughs> South Asian. You're not, are you Southeast? There's not such thing as West Asian. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> are you are you the shortest? Your dad, your brother's quite tall, bro. Lama Bernie. Yeah, Brian Mew is quite tall. Your brother, yeah, Shamal's family is quite tall. Oh, Shamu. the pygmies, the pygmies. Yeah, yeah, they're quite tall. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Abdurrahman. Yeah, that's true. And Lukman. Right, watch your mouth of Lukman, yeah. Look, my G, bro. Oh, bad. Oh, bad. <laughs> but yeah, uh, even <laughs> Ifti is from Bangladesh, yeah? yeah he's, a, he's about 5'9. Yeah, that's not tall, though. By my standards, anything past me is tall, bro. No, no, you're short. <laughs> that's... But you, ca what, camera, cam what, camera, camera. Can I, can I, can I, what, what, what you make up, you make up with, with good personality, bro. Okay, I'll let you off. Mashallah. <laughs> but you're, like I said to you, your family, they're like, you know those little Red Bulls that you get? <laughs> You know how they get the big Red Bulls, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they, they squeeze it down, but the same amount of energy of the big Red Bull, but it's in a shot. That's can you I, guys. Can I, can, I, can I tell you something? You haven't met any of my mom's brothers, yeah? <laughs> Bro, don't bring your mom's brothers into yeah. it. I'm talking about you. you. It's just, unfortunately, we were quiet, and that's stuff not unfortunate, Alhamdulillah. We've got that. Alhamdulillah, bro. You've got brains, bro. Would you oh rather be God. tall and dumb like Zakaria? <laughs> 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 Up, bro. I'm, I'm, you, I'm gonna flip the table and ah! Zach is very intelligent. Zach is gorgeous. I love Zach. I call Zach when I need to get a download. You could have been short and dumb. 
You couldn't be short and dumb. <laughs> long <laughs> stand. <laughs> this conversation's gone south. <laughs> right, today we're going to talk about testosterone while you're dumb. <laughs> um, you're short and you're dumb. Your testosterone's low. <laughs> well, okay, does testosterone affect your intelligence? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Honestly>. <laughs> <laughs> right, so testosterone has an effect on your cognitive function, absolutely. Right, okay. So we know that the depletion of testosterone will lead to things like possible Alzheimer's. Um, Serious? Yeah, yeah, the studies now on, on, on the effect. We know that it facilitates the release of dopamine. So definitely in terms of activities of the brain and neural networks, testosterone has an effect there. So yes, it will have an effect on your ability to deal with productivity in terms of your mind, your mindfulness. So if you think about it from a mindfulness point of view, you feel less anxious, you feel more driven, you feel more kind of productive. As a consequence, you'll be able to do more in that day. And I think that that's reality. And yes, and if it's in, if it's implied that with all of these studies, and again, look, dementia, Alzheimer's, you know, cognitive impairment, these are multifactorial problems. You can't just say, oh, it's linear. Because of this, you've got that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But we know that the reduction or the uh, insufficient or deficiency of testosterone will, will can be invo- <laughs> involved in someone developing dementia. Before we move on to the decline in testosterone, which is, for me, the most interesting part of it, is um, one last hypothetical question. Yeah? Captain America. Super serum. Super serum. Yes. So what is that? Is it possible to have us like, to get someone who, yeah, we know it's possible, isn't it? Because it's been done, bro. Have you seen that program on Netflix um, about the guy who, 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 who juiced up Barry Bonds and you know who Barry Bonds is? No. The baseball player. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's that the scandal and the scandal, and, yeah. and and what's him A Rod, Anthony Rodriguez, and then that. So, but you need to watch it. Hall of it's Shame. Hall of Shame. You'd like it, bro, because this guy he took like this. I think it was a hundred meters. Have you watched it, Zach? No. Bro, you have to watch it. You know what? We should watch it and come back and do the next episode. Yeah. And we can go through it because I, I think that's so really I think, I think Let's put a pin in that one. I was going to say you, but yeah. the pin would be about there's different. Uh, so testosterone is an umbrella statement, yeah. And then what it's used for, right? For, earnestly, medically, TRT, underground lab use, performance enhancement, recreational use. So we can look recreational at each use. Track. Yeah, yeah. So why would you do that for recreation? Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, you've got to look at testosterone. If someone's taking testosterone and they mix it with other things. Like what? Like if you have people, uh, it's a large topic, right? But people who actually <laughs> want to take things like cocaine. Uh, cocaine uh, with testosterone? <laughs> 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 no, that's a dumb crackhead, bro. <laughs> no, listen. So, <laughs> listen, listen. Then we'll take it together. <laughs> I'm trying to say to you, listen, wait, 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 listen, please, please. listen, listen, listen. People listen. are taking testosterone with cocaine, no, man. Not, not in one shot. Oh, my God. Wow. So these are people who take who are on testosterone already <laughs> and they end up taking things like cocaine or these stimulants when they go to nightclubs and parties and they get this sudden surge of energy, yeah? But these are the same candidates that end up having heart attacks and strokes. Wow. Yeah, but they're not, I thought, they're not I thought, shooting like, that cocaine. Cocaine. <laughs> Hey, here's some Dynaball. Mix them together, see what happens. You're going to feel great at the end of this night. It's like that sp- the, the, the spinning wheel, isn't it? <laughs> you got Dynaball. <laughs> but no, so, so the problem okay. getting here. So anyway, so yeah, I think um. this conversation about what you're referring to as PEDs or perform, perform, yeah. performance enhancement drugs, that's a huge other topic. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's interesting because obviously... <laughs> Um, and by the way, it's, it's, and by the way, it's a double-edged sword because it was these same people back in the sixties and seventies, maybe even earlier than that, fifties, who were using these drugs for performance enhancement. That actually, what you call the bro science, actually spurned the way for the use of testosterone replacement, because a lot of people were already on it, thinking right, so it has benefits. But at the same time, it's the same same cohort of people that are using it inappropriately, using it dangerously um, for their own gains, basically cheating. Yeah. Um, that actually put testosterone in a very difficult place to issue now. We could, so, talk, about, the thing, we could talk about another occasion. Yeah, because I think we should do one specifically for sport, about, about sport doping. Yeah, what absolutely. Because what's happened now is I've realized that when people hear testosterone, immediately they think doping. Of course they do. Straight away. Of course they do. And, 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 think, and forget people, the medical regulatory bodies yeah. have put testosterone as a controlled drug. Yeah. 
We have to understand that. So explain to everyone what, 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 they, what you mean by control So a controlled drug. drug means it has its pharmaceutical place. So it it's regulating who prescribes it, when it's prescribed, where it's kept. You don't have to lock it That's away. That's a good thing though, isn't it? Okay. So it's a hormone, right? Yeah. You don't lock away estrogen. Well, you don't lock it away, but you don't put it in a control you setting. Like insulin as well, isn't it? Insulin. You can use insulin as well as a doping drug. Thyroxin. That's another hormone that's used for certain uh, problems to do with hormone imbalances. But, but, but by the way, they also have implications on catabolism and anabolism. So the way the body metabolizes, the way the body develops. Uh, then you've got cortisol. That, that could easily be another banned drug. So all these... No, when you say controlled drug, it doesn't mean it's banned. No, what I'm saying is that it's a controlled drug in the world of pharmaceuticals because it can be a drug of abuse. Right. So a control drug like opioids, like codeine, yeah. morphine, like sleeping tablets, zopiclone, benzodiazepines, and in, uh, there's Schedule 1, Schedule 2, Schedule 3. Testosterone's at a lower level, Schedule 4, which means you don't lock it away. But nonetheless, it's, it's not like... I'll give you an example. What's the morning after pill? It's an estrogen, it's a, it's a progesterone boost. It's, it's a hormone-based pill, yeah? yeah. I'm not going to get into this, but you can buy that over the counter from the pharmacist. We're obviously, within certain criteria, and you know, the pharmacy asks certain questions. You can't buy testosterone over the farm. Do you see? But do you think that's because, because of no, because because, because of what's athletes. happened. That's what I'm saying to yeah, you. Was, was if, if, but it was because if, of doping. Basically. Yeah, because of doping. But if it wasn't for those athletes, I suspect there wouldn't be as much drive to know about testosterone as we do know about today. Right, I understand what you're so saying. So, broad science unfortunately did do some driving. But have you noticed recently? Uh, there's been a lot of ex athletes. You go on TRT. Have come out and actually spoke yeah. about it. And yeah. I think Joe Rogan's like, give credit where credit is due. Yeah, he's one of the first people to talk about it openly now. Yeah, and if, even, if, if 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 TRT was allowed in UFC, would it be a would it move? It was allowed. It was allowed it, until it was allowed. until that oh. Brazilian fight was his name, the old school boy. Oh, uh, Vito. Vito, Vito Belfort basically abused it. It wasn't just him, but there's yeah, a few people. The, a but it's, it's, but it's, if, it's, if, it's if you say had an advert, it would be uh, yeah, Victor Belfort. <laughs> Victor Belfort bro. So what what you're meant not to do, you're not not meant to say, oh, I'm on TRT, and then someone does a blood test, and your levels of like super physiological, they should be kept within a certain range. We can talk we about, about that range. No, 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 we talk about it now because. Sorry, I don't, that sounds a bit aggressive, bro. Sorry. <laughs> that was a bit rude. I need to know now. <laughs> Information is spared at no consequence. Uh, Badre Silva, I want now. Now. <laughs> I want now. Um, so, okay, so let's talk a bit about um, the decline. Because you talk about puberty, which is the incline, right? Let's talk about decline. When, when do you start as a man? Start declining will cost it to you. Okay, when do you reach your peak? Does it, does it level out? And then when do you, uh, no, I, 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 I can't speak, you, bro. Sorry, you're, you're, you're saying the flow and the progression of testosterone. I think I had too much. It's, it's, it's progression, <laughs> it's, it's maintenance, and then it's decline. Okay, so that has varied over the centuries. What we know is testosterone depreciation should have happened in our say fourth maybe fifth decade seriously should have we're now seeing it well, in our second this? well we, we look at testosterone levels on average of men in their 60s say 30 years ago and look at testosterone of men in their 20s and 30s and looking at the synonymous in levels wow. so the testosterone of a man in his say 30s today would nearly mimic the source of a man in his, say, his 50s or 60s in the 1990s. Maybe even before, maybe 80s and 90s, right? Right, that's mad. So that's crazy, isn't it? So the decline so is... Zach, Zach's probably got the same test levels as... Uh, my as dad. a 70-year-old man, yeah. My dad. Well, no, my, no, dad no, no. my dad's... I think we should be careful because we're... we're, we're okay, so why am I mentioning this? I had a really good colleague, who's still very close, he's an amazing doctor, uh... Can I say her name? No. No. Okay. Anyway, better so, not, better better not, yeah. so she she used to tell me when we were working together as a GP, she goes, Whenever I see a young man with depression and anxiety, I do a testosterone test. And she goes, And do you know what? It's always low. So what's low? And talk okay. to us about the numbers as well. Okay. Like how, how does it get calculated? But before I go into that, let me talk about okay, go ahead. the decline and the age of decline. We're seeing now on average, mid thirties to late thirties, a depreciation of testosterone. 
and that depreciation can be quite marked. Why is that happening? Hundreds of reasons, and we can talk about this on another occasion, but look at things like environment, sleep patterns, activity. Uh, um, you know, we spoke about hits to the head, weight loss. We spoke about certain drugs, certain anticonvulsants that might, might be on, you know, all, all these kind of stuff, right? Also, you said to me last time, environmental factors. Yes, yeah, like- so I'm going to estrogens. Okay, a good example is uh, everyone that loves, you know, vegetarians are a really good example of this. People who go vegetarian or vegan are going to struggle with their testosterone. It goes down, depreciates a lot. Then you've got something known as the soy boy effect. So these are guys who are taking soya protein supplements. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the way you said it. Soy boy. No, no, say, that, say that same phrase again. The soy boy effect. No, 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 no. Before you said what some people call... The soy boy effect. You just you just made that up right now. I swear to God, I didn't. No one's calling. No one's calling the soy boy effect. I swear to you, it's called the soy <laughs> boy effect. Is, bro? There's a case study that actually you can mimic. There's a case study that said soy boy effect. It's called the soy boy effect. Yeah. No. So this is a, a boy. <laughs> a boy that's on soy. <laughs> no. So there's a young man who's taking soya based proteins. Right. Like for everything. What do you I mean? mean? Like imagine like meal soya replacement. F- everything was soya. Okay. And they found he was lethargic, he put on weight, he was <sighs> tired, his libido was gone. Done a blood analysis, his estrogen was through the roof and his testosterone was completely gone. Was Apparently left. it's an insult. Gone? Huh? Apparently it's an insult, bro. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you kidding? Well, really no, no, right. I'm being serious, bro. <laughs> no, it's not. It is, it's mine, isn't it? See? When you say apparently, have you got any references? Yeah, it was on the independent, bro. Go on and say it, read it out. The title, Soy Boy, wonder if this online insult for you. <laughs> this is a typical thing. Read headlines and now you've got evidence for it. So we've actually seen it recently. And one of a very close pharmacy friend of us actually saw it. And he told me about it because I can't believe I actually saw witness it myself and I've done a blood test on this patient. So how low? So you're saying he had no testosterone? It's very, very low. It's markedly low. And I talked about levels afterwards. But what it was, the estrogen is also a messenger that tells the brain so in each, so I'll give you an example, right? The brain is like a thermostat when it comes to hormones. And I'm going to put it as simple as possible because it's much more dynamic and it's much more intricate than it's beyond belief. It's like it's in itself, you're looking at weeks and weeks of lecturing on this, yeah? But if you just imagine your brain like a thermostat and it tells the body how to regulate itself, we call homeostasis. So keeping the body in a certain state to protect it and to maintain it. So if you're in a cold environment, your body will tell yourself to vasoconstrict, try to contain the temperature around you. So your body does protective mechanisms, okay? So when testosterone is low, it tells the brain, I'm low. It tells the brain through the gland in the middle of the brain called the pituitary gland, produce more messenger hormone to tell my testes to produce more testosterone. When the testosterone levels go up, it then tells the brain, hey, hey, we're cool. I don't need any more, right? House gets hot. One second, bro. What the hell are you laughing at, bro? <laughs> Every time you say testes, this guy starts laughing. <laughs> Sorry, Every bro. time you've said testes, this guy starts laughing, bro. Get it out of your system. Should I say, should I say bollocks? <laughs> yeah, make you feel better. Yeah, He's bollocks. <laughs> Doctor, his problem is bollocks. <laughs> oh, sorry, bro. Just... Go, carry on. So... The, the the brain is acts in that fashion, okay? So <clears throat> now I'm going to give you a good example. The thermostat should be somewhere where it tells a general rule, right? In the body, in, in the house, yeah? Now imagine I put the thermostat, a Bluetooth thermostat, mm-hmm. I stuck it in your bedroom. Mm-hmm. I closed the bedroom door, but I put a heater in there. Right. An electric heater. What's the electric heater telling the thermostat now? That it's really hot. And what does the thermostat tell the house to do? <clears throat> Um, switch off the heating Switch off the heating yeah. So the whole house becomes Cold But the room's still hot The room's still hot Yeah Yeah That's as easy as I can put it to you You're taking soya Which is full of estrogen Yeah Then that estrogen uh, Summates and, and obviously grows in levels Then it starts telling the brain Hey hey There's loads of estrogen in the body Which means There must be loads of testosterone Because testosterone converts to estrogen Okay. There's a process. There's a right, there's right. a lot to talk about. It, but it's a process. Convince the estrogen from the bollocks. Does it make you feel better now? You feel good? You got your system? It does, yeah. Because it actually happens at a cellular level. Right. Where testosterone converts to estrogen. And then that in itself, estrogen, tells the brain, yo, yo, we're good. We've got enough testosterone. But obviously you haven't. 
But then it mashes up the whole rest of your body. So then now the brain switches off. No more messenger hormone. We're not going to produce any more testosterone because where the hell did the estrogen come from? The body can't differentiate. Like the heater in the room. Yeah. It's heat. That's all I know. It's heat. So it must be hot. So then this guy's testosterone is going down, even though his estrogen is still going up because he's still swallowing all his soy right. growing, yeah? Or these soy supplements. So that that's an example. So what does estrogen, like high levels of estrogen do to you? Uh, look at Zach. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, a quick question, yeah. You know, if you're in Don't a- Don't cry, Zach. No, <laughs> go, well, go. You know, if you're, for example, you're in a house of just women, do your testosterone still, it, does that, because you said it, it, it based on your environment as well, yeah? Mm. For example, Big Brother, you're in a Big Brother's house and whatnot, and there's like 30 You know women. he's asking about himself here. Yeah. No, no, I'm not. It's I'm his not. friend that lives in there. <laughs> no, I just want to know. Just, just, um, does it affect your testosterone? I, I think that's a really dangerous question, Zach. <laughs> no, I think, no, no, it, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It, it wouldn't. The only way it's going to affect your testosterone is if you, those women decide to feed you xenoestrogens. So pump you full of like food, full of estrogens, like soy protein or phytoestrogens that you find in certain foods and certain certain cultures of certain phytoestrogens. I think psychologically you'd be finished. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. Can you imagine being stuck in a room, like a house just with women, bro? This, no, no. I'm. I. I, I want to just say that we need to very quickly dive. On, <laughs> sorry, move on topic. <laughs> I've got. I've got plenty of females around me, so I will be very careful. <laughs> what no, I say, not all the time, bro. Like, yeah. you need so, to be with your band, Devin. Sometimes. <laughs> I think your environment has an impact on the way that but, you but, act and you react. Women, women being together. Sorry, man. This mic's. Is that, is that working? Yeah. yeah. So like they 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 regulate it. Well, he's trying to he's trying to apply that. So we know anecdotally that when women are together and they stay together for a long time, they actually start falling into the same cycle in terms yeah. of their menstrual periods. Yeah, they sink. It's amazing. It's, it's it's actually quite amazing. So is that? I'm not going to comment on that. I'm not. I'm not. I have no place to comment on that because I'm yeah. not. I'm not an expert on that field. But that's anecdotal. So we know that happens. We've seen it happen of our own in our own families. Um. Uh, uh, does it have an effect on the man's bearing? I, I don't think so. So what if you run men all the time, men, mm. and they're, they're all high testosterone? The only, the, the only no, 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 the thing no, is- I'm talking about another man. Oh, there. another man. Okay. Yeah, so I think the only thing you're gonna get from that is the environmental you're gonna, you're gonna, Yeah, you're gonna be lifting so weights. So it's gonna or, be like, well, we train, we exercise, yeah. and you're gonna fall into that kind of rhythm of thinking and mode of yeah. thinking. You are gonna have your own thought patterns. Group think. Group yeah. think, but yeah, yeah, what you refer to as if you want herd, herd activity, yeah? yeah? Um, and I think that that that's key as well. But yeah, I, I don't know what Zach wants me to say about estrogen. Well, do, do is you is think it automatically, take... osmotically affecting me, just floating out of the room <laughs> into his brain? Can you imagine if that was true, bro? Oh, God, help us. Imagine oh, off, offsetting testosterone and estrogen with It's like other. that um, Batman character, what's that? Poison Ivy. It's she sprays, shoots hormones. Uh, like, um, yeah, yeah, pheromones. Yeah, yeah. Pheromones. That's, yeah. It's, it's, what's, pheromones and hormones, are, are they the same thing? Well, similar, I'm, I'm, obviously similar, I'm not a doctor yeah, on all these things but Similar-ish But the way they produce And the way that the glands produce them And where they come from and, and how they affect you In terms of the way That they interact with your system Is different Different But they're from the same level of If you want try, try, You know Messenger Messenger activity Right And how they affect your Your physiology Your states Your your your, your mindfulness uh, uh, Amir If I give you some um, Uh things yeah can you tell me if this person needs trt or not go for it please ahead all right cool lethargic okay and it's for a friend yeah yeah <laughs> lethargic <laughs> uh sleeping patterns all mash up mm -hmm. um find it hard to stay awake during the day mm -hmm. um and uh, just can't be bothered. Basically, you're talking about yourself. No, 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 it's not me. It's a fourth friend. <laughs> Go on, mate. So the, the problem there now, if you pull up the Adam questionnaire. Adam. A, a D A M questionnaire. That 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 that's our marker for testing for testosterone levels. In terms of symptomology, not 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 quantitatively, qualitatively. And it's 10 questions. It's yeah? good because this is the this is what we're supposed to be yeah. on. So 10 questions. Here we go. Just that person who answer those questions. Don't answer the first do, question. Do I have to answer Don't answer it? the first <laughs> question. 
So the point is, if you answer more, this is interesting, yeah? If you answer more than three out of 10, or is it, I can't remember what it was, there's a certain number. If you go to the bottom, like it tells you what, to, what the scores are. It, now, if you go to an actual PDF, go, go to Adam Questionnaire. No, no, don't. Type in Adam Questionnaire and type in PDF. And PDF. There you go, PDF right there, Zach. Yeah, there should be at the end of the peer question. Hey, look what it says. If you, what does it say, Zach? If you answer yes to a number of one or seven, or if you answer yes to more than three questions, you may have lower test for Yeah, so one and seven you, is, is so question, number Zach, one please. is libido, number seven is, I think it's erections. Do you have lack of energy? No, no, num number one, number one. Number one let him read uh, all the, for the people that are listening. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Do you have a decrease in libido? That's number one. Yeah, number do you two? have a lack of energy? Number three. Do you have a decrease in strength or endurance? Number four. Have you lost weight? Height, height, height. Oh, how is it? Bro, this, are you dyslexic? One more mistake, you're never going to read that again on the podcast. <laughs> have you lost height? You can lose height. You can lose height, bro. Yeah. Bone mineral density, right? Your bone mineral starts depreciating as your testosterone levels go down. Does it is go, that why can, when you get older, like you get shorter? Yeah. Can you increase oh. height if you take a testosterone match? No. No. So, so you've I, lost I it forever. Once, once it's very hard to promote bone growth like that it's different it's totally different but you can maintain it though you can maintain it yeah but you can't you can't increase it no oh not in, well yeah yeah have Go you on. noticed a decrease of enjoyment of life next one are you sad and or grumpy let's use that Go on. <laughs> <laughs> are your erections less strong uh -huh. okay have you noticed a recent deterioration in your ability to play sports go on are you falling asleep after dinner yeah oh wait yes has there been a recent deterioration in your work performance? Now we, we have okay, 11. Like, no, can I just, don't say which ones it is. But how many of more these? than three, bro. Okay, is so, yeah. so the, now, okay, this is the problem, right? Most hormone in deficiencies, including the pro-hormone vitamin D, your answer yeah, is gonna four be, or five oh, okay. of them positive, apart from libido or even maybe libido. But the point I'm getting at is the most significant is one in seven. Can't get it up, and I don't want to have relations. That's usually quite specific. That to means testosterone. it's mash up, though. It's probably testosterone specific, right? Okay, it, but if it, those it, two it can are, be psychosocial uh, as well. Can be. Go on. If those two are not true, then there's a high probability that you don't have low testosterone. So that that's the middle ground. You can still have low testosterone, but it's, you're just maintaining enough for you to be developed. So I tell patients this is really key, yeah? and you don't have to answer this question, Zach. Yeah. Your libido, and so more so, let's just put it this way, forget libido, because that's that, that, you know, that shouldn't really go much most of your life. Your erection itself, I tell patients who say, yeah, I get erections, I say, okay, I'm going to ask this question. Was it like when you were 20 something? Mm. And then they kind of go, actually, no. And and morning erections is a good one. Stuff for a while, bro. You know? So what I'm trying to say is, so what I then say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> You're right. That's upsetting, fam. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, imagine having to admit that to someone. <laughs> what? Yeah, but a doctor has uh, confidentiality. But I would lie. I'm like, nah, we're talking about bro. It's better now. <laughs> You know, I do at that point. I'd rather not get to your seat than admit. I, I turn around and say to you, show me. Show me the evidence. I want to see you, sir. No, no, the, no, no. The reality is, that I, no, I try to say in a polite way, in a, in a polite fashion as possible. I say, look, do you feel that they have gone less than they would have in your 20s? And they'd be like, yeah, they're not as great as they are. And they, they that's their way of saying, oh my God, you're right. Yeah, but so that, think, okay, so if someone... So again, so now let's, 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 great, just, yeah. let, let, let's be careful, let's, let's be careful, yeah. because you, wait, what's it, functionality is key. Go on. <laughs> Not me, it's, it's what they say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what they say. Is it degrees? <laughs> like angles, or is it like... So I'm thinking about, in their respect, it pays homage to probably the ability to get an erection, yeah. maintain erection, and the firmness of the erection, do you see? So these are all things yeah. that you can grade on testosterone in terms of the vasodilation of the blood inside the soft tissue of the penis. In don't, terms of, you see, don't use that word. <laughs> okay, I'll rephrase it. Cut, right, start again. So about the blood flow into the cut, uh, into the cavernous uh, spongy form material within. <laughs> <laughs> within. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you this now. When I started within the this organs. podcast, yeah, I never thought I'd be talking about this, bro. But spongy part, oh, come on, bro. <laughs> You're right there, bro. He, he somehow makes it worse. Sorry, one moment. 
No, but real talk, like, are you falling asleep after dinner, bro? I'm gone. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on, I'm on like Can- finish him mode. <sighs> Sorry, guys, I need to just answer this. Have you noticed a decrease of enjoyment of life? That's 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 a hard question, bro. That's a deep question. Yeah, that well. hurts, bro. So that's about uh, anxiety, depression, productivity, mindfulness. Um, okay, so let's talk about levels because you said you were gonna you were okay. teasing us with the levels. So, so le- what's a normal like? Okay, this is the issue, right? Level. So there's the physiological level, which is should. Be, so there's testosterone has got. Okay, so testosterone has got. Um, your what you refer to as your total testosterone. Yeah. Then you've got what's called the free testosterone. Yeah. Then you've got the active testosterone, which is quite powerful. Okay. So free t- your total testosterone usually is between twelve and thirty. Thirty is upper limit of normal. Upper limit of normal. Yeah. Okay. Then you've got something called free testosterone, which means most of your testosterone is stuck on a protein. One is called albumin, which comes from the, or they both come from the liver. The other one's called SHBG, which is sex hormone binding globulin. So come they from both, the testes. yeah, well, no, from the liver as well. Oh, okay. But they they bind against testosterone. Just a very small amount of testosterone, probably about three percent of it, is active around the body. And when your body needs more testosterone, it cleaves off a little bit of testosterone from those particular proteins. And other times, certain things can actually make your proteins go up and cleave or mop up more testosterone. So then you've got something called free testosterone. And level three, remember I said 12 to 30? This is the UK, but I mean, America's like, they do it in the hundreds. It's different values. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And they, they talk about, because it's due with deciliters per, per de, um, milliliters per deciliter or milliliters per millimeter, whatever it is. They, just whatever values you're using, you can, and you can convert them easily. Now, if we look at the UK values, 12 to 30, Free testosterone is 0.28, I think it's 265 to 0.285. It's tiny compared in fraction. Mm. And then you've got the next level, which is known as dihydrotestosterone. That is the truly active testosterone that your testosterone converts into to be used in the body, to have certain activities in the body, okay? And that level varies as well. I can't remember the parameters for that. The issue is every so often they change the parameter levels. Certain countries, they say, your test should be between six and 20 something. You're like, wow, that's a huge variation. And they recently have come out with a new uh, level saying 14 to 30, 14 if you're a diabetic. They're trying to help diabetics because they've realized diabetics need more testosterone because they're usually low on testosterone. And the study came out, uh, the T4DM study, which shows that you can actually reverse diabetes through correcting testosterone. And that was one of the biggest studies in Australia. <clears throat> no other factor you can change in your life, including weight loss, showed the amount of testosterone, the amount of, of replacing lost or insufficient testosterone had on actually curing diabetes. I'm not talking about insulin diabetics. I'm talking about those who've acquired diabetes over time due to multiple factors. Even if they've gone to insulin afterwards. I haven't read the study, I need to look at that part of the study, but yes, we do know that there is a reversal factor. Okay. I think I think this topic <sighs> is a lot of information. It's an interesting topic, bro. I think because... we should look at breaking up onto segments because yeah, there's yeah. a lot. Yeah, there is a lot. There's a lot. We need to talk about the principal effects it has on the body. Yeah. If we start using it, the side effects you've got to look out for, the management of testosterone, yeah. the outcomes, the prognosis, is it long-term? Do you have to stay on it? Can you come off it? Are you stuck on it? Yeah. There's all these facts. And then you've got to look at... But I think I think for today, I was going to go into HRT. I don't know if you want to talk so, about it now or so do you want to like have a... I think I can briefly say HRT, so hormone replacement, hormone replacement therapy, therapy yeah. is an umbrella statement. And underneath that, you've got your testosterone replacement and your what's referred to as, if you want, your female hormone replacement therapy, or what sometimes they refer to now as BHRT, which is bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, which you can talk about as well on another occasion. I don't manage uh, the menopause. I manage, so again, Sorry, let's, just, one. let's just let's go back <laughs> to management of men's hormones. So this is depreciation of testosterone in the aging male, which we call the andropause. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. The andropause, okay? Now, you wanted to know about what happens over time. So we spoke about the ages. It is a very analog process. That's why men don't pick it up. 
women because of their periods, their menstrual cycle, they will know when they're going through the quote unquote change. Right, 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 right. Because their periods become erratic. There's a certain age group between 45 and 50. That that age things start, you know, depreciating, levels start going off, they start getting, you know, certain Also symptoms. they're more in tune with their body, isn't it? Yeah. So they know that they... this is wrong. Something's going on. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm losing my periods. I'm having hot flushes, I'm sweating more, I'm lethargic, I'm actually becoming a little bit more cranky. And okay, so now your hormones are showing a level of depreciation. There's now becoming ablation of the ovaries. The ovaries are actually, do you want giving up and saying it's over now? And then that that happens and they can see that. With the men, you can't. It's very gradual. They get tired slowly, they put on weight slowly, and they just think like everything else, that's oh, just I'm getting old. Yeah. yeah. Like give you an example, right? Arthritis, which is degeneration of the bone architecture which is basically loss of joint space, damage of the joint, the joints, the, the, the skin of the bone, certain development of certain architectural change, what you call lipping and osteocalcinosis. Um, uh, These are just medical terms, yeah? This is a degeneration of the bone. Do you do anything about arthritis? Yes or no? Well, me. I'm asking, yeah. Just no. as a lay person. No, you don't. No. When would you do something about arthritis? Before you get it. When it causes? Dysfunction. Did you hear the, the gem that I just dropped over? Before you get it. What do you think about that? Can you put a camera on me, please? Don't ever do that again. <laughs> okay? You hurt, you really no, but it's true. It. You prevent arthritis, isn't it? By what? Not getting old. That's called suicide. <laughs> 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 no, but so you're saying everyone's going to get arthritis? 100%. You have to, bro. It's the generation. What do you mean you point. have to, bro? I don't want to get arthritis. You've really, if I x ray you now, you've arthritis, got arthritis bro. everywhere. I know bro. my fingers are all gone now, bro. Yeah. Man. So the point I'm getting at is. So arthritis is a rite of passage to old age. You have no, to get as arthritis. In your whole body degenerates, but you're allowed to get old. What I don't want to hear someone say is, oh, but I'm getting old, that's why it's gone off. I'm like, no, 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 no. Stop there. There's a, there, there's a point where your age and aging process is acceptable Yeah. because it's meant to happen. But why should you live in, 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 in silent pain? Why should you have dysfunction? Why should you be tired, lethargic? Why should you have joint pains? Listen, we get so excited about arthritis that we start replacing joints, you see? Because the pain can be so unbearable, so dysfunctioning, so fragmenting, overbearing to that person that we'll take the joint out and put a new prosthetic joint in there. Complete joint change. Do you think that? So the point I'm getting at divorce, is divorce, especially. In the, the, let me explain this. So I'll get to the thing about divorce. So. But the point I'm getting is when testosterone starts depreciating, we don't. We shouldn't do anything. Like, what's the saying? Don't uh, don't fix if it's not broken. Yeah. I've had patients with low testosterone, but they feel great. So what am I going to do about them? Mm. Their body likes that level. Leave them alone. But henceforth, how about someone who's got an okay level, but they're really syndromic of testosterone deficiency? So I'm saying, do you see like- Marital discord. About, yeah, ma Marital discord. Okay, so now- so uh, Midlife I, crisis. So I'll give you an example. People right? leaving their wives or, or, or not leaving their wives I, or I, having I think, marital I discord. I think, I think, I think buying a you, convertible. Yeah. Buying a convertible. Well, that, that's, that's, that's different. I think that there's the there's socioeconomic and there's like psychosocial issues. Yeah, there, but, but like maybe- they feel like they get to a certain age. But buying buying a convertible means you're taking a risk. That means well, you're mean, be good then. But I mean Yeah, that's true. Generally I think that that's different. That's I don't know what that I mean that's psychosocial. Or a Maybe. Peugeot. An EV electric, Peugeot. Electric Peugeot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that that's being smart of my accounts. So it's got nothing to do with my brain patterns. I'm just thinking about saving money. Yeah, so but like you tend to start getting marital discord and all that. So that a good example, if you fix someone's hormonal imbalances, both men and women, you can make their marriage a much better place to be. Yeah. So when I spoke to the professor today, Professor Hacker, he's a, quite a big lead in, in, the, in the British Society of Sexual Medicine and where you get most of our algorithms from. And he was saying that, you know, when, when, a, when a husband sees his wife go through the menopause and he then sees the benefit BHRT and all these hormones benefit them, he will pay an arm and a leg for her to stay on this therapy because the impact it has on his life. Mm. And likewise, when a man's given testosterone replacement therapy, the productivity, the energy levels, the time he has for his family, the, you know, the care and consideration he has for his wife. And I think, you know, managing both hormones. And that's why I think, you know, when I, when I was managing TRT in the beginning, which I've come back to now, um, 
we started looking at you managing women's hormones as well because a lot of these these men in their fourth and fifth decade their wives are going through the menopause and they're saying she's really frightening me i don't know if she is anymore oh. and i had one of them say that when we put the, his his spouse on on hormonal therapy uh with our initial company um he said it's a game changer he goes god she's totally different now she's back to what she used to be like and all i can say is unless you've people had like, people like like i said ex-athletes who especially in combat sports and stuff like yeah. that who've been you know hitting there like even american footballers footballers are, are, are the worst american footballers are the worst, yeah, they're they're the worst. They're like, yeah. but the point of getting that affects it, their depression a lot of them committed so there's a few one guy shot himself in the chest with a shotgun i would be surprised and he goes please can you he left a suicide note saying can you can you examine my brain no, i wouldn't be surprised because the only way apparently is it true the only way you can you can um detect brain trauma uh no cte is actually to take the brain out and actually have a look at it I, I'm, anyway I'm, yes another topic right? it's yeah. another topic but i don't point, know why i mentioned the, that the, i'm trying the, to look the, smart the, the, the point i'm trying to get at is when um yeah, please don't do that again sorry when uh <laughs> when when look unless you've had a hormonal imbalance yeah it's not like having a sore throat or, or, or an injured limb. Um, it is an awful feeling where your body and your mind are f- completely out of sync. Out of sync yeah. And you don't know if you're coming or going and you're trying to maintain normality and you're having these calamities all around you and you don't know if you're coming or going. It's a horrible, horrible until you, God forbid, feel that. And then you get someone giving you back and replacing that therapy or giving you replacement therapy. You kind of say, wow, that was a nightmare. I was living a nightmare. Can I ask? Okay. So there might be people out there asking, might want to ask this question. Say, why is it? So how do you get, how how do you get to a point where, how can you delay? That's the question. How can you delay? The decline of testosterone. Uh, t- uh, testosterone. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? So mm. I'm talking about everything, environment. Like, would you have to go back to maybe live on a farm somewhere with no pollution and eat only organic, like only from the la- Does that make sense? But mm. what would you have to do to so, kind of increase that? Because you're saying before we were better. We were better. So what has changed in that? In that, you know. I'm guessing 50 years, right? 30 years. 30 years? 34 years. And it keeps going low. And I, I, yeah. saw, I saw some articles about they're saying Goes down there's, by 2% there's kids year. In, 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 in 1819 having low testosterone, bro. Like, why is so, this happening? So, so look, it's multifactorial. And I think you can't base it, obviously, oh, live like this kind of life. That will probably help maintain it. But you're looking at something like a cross uh, um a cohort study where you're looking over the next 20, 30, 40 years, what happens if I take you out of this environment and put you in that environment and see what happens to testosterone? Can you do that? I mean, in this day and age, people are literally but, but bound they don't, don't they to their phones. Why? No, but look. Why is this happening, bro? I've told you because we've had all these factors around us the way we sleep, the way we eat, the way we think. Mm. I told you about the xenoestrogens, the xenoplastics, that's another one. What's that? The, Plastics that actually, you know, that you know, like bottled, bottled water and stuff right, like that, right, right. that coming off, you know, the amount of contraceptive, uh, uh, um, uh, um, even fluoride, isn't it, in the water? Fluoride and what? And also, you've got like, all the contraception in the water as well. Women obviously using contraceptive pill, they're urinating it back out. It's in the I mean, how do you filter all of these hormones out of the water? Mm. I don't know. That's, That's what people look at. Man. People looking at drinking purified distilled water. I mean, look, there's. There's a whole host of reasons why testosterone. Yeah, it's not just falling. one thing. You're yeah, but I'm talking about look. If you exercise more regularly, try to eat more healthily, um, don't, you know, sleep properly. Sleep has an impact. Stress has an impact on your hormone levels as well. Uh, uh, um, you know, we spoke about um, head injury. We spoke about uh, uh, lifestyle, you know, certain medications as well. So what about screens and stuff like that. Does that have an impact on your brain patterns? Possibly, it's difficult to say. I know someone was mentioning like uh, electricity. Yeah, so if you think of it, so because radiation. we didn't have electricity before, okay. that would sleep so, during when it's dark and yeah. wake up when it's light. Right. So, so if your you, body kind yeah, of like, has, has a di- has a diurnal pattern. So stuff in your mobile phone in your pocket is that going to cause radiation around the testes? Possibly, like we know when women were putting mobile phones in their bras back in the day. 
is there a link between that and breast CA or breast cancer? Possibly so. Because you have all this radiation around you that's excessive to what's referred to as the background radiation. Um, you know, I think there's, there's a lot to it. You know, radiation levels have changed, climates have changed, pressures in the air have changed. I mean, we're seeing so many more people developing asthma we've never seen before. Mm. So Even think, things like um, allergies. Allergies have gone up. Like peanut allergies. I heard it didn't even exist a few, you know. So the, our body's becoming more hypersensitive. They had this whole thing about the clean hypothesis back in the day that, you know, we keep on making everything clean. People are going to actually become hypoallergenic. hypoallergenic. So they're going to touch something and they have massive reaction mm. to it. So let the kid run around in the mud. Let the kid eat, pick up and you know eat a worm or whatever they did back in those days. You know, <laughs> to crush a snail yeah. in his mouth. I don't know whatever, whatever it was. You know, like let them live that kind of quote unquote dirty lifestyle because then they, they having these kind of immune primes yeah. events where they're having this immune response. Do you, you think it's things. medicine though? What is like getting used to antibiotics and uh, and all that madness? That doesn't help, Zach. To be fair, because you're you're destroying your gut, your your gut uh, microso microbiome, microsomal activity, and the kind of microbacteria in the gut that mm -hmm. is protective, and they've got an action as well on the body as well. You mess around with those things, and you're going to mess around with the whole body uniquely. And we forget the body works in in unison. You know, you affect one part of the body, the rest of the body becomes affected. Mm -hmm. You know. I think you touched on a lot of things. I think what we'll do is next month. Mm. We'll go through hormone therapy and what to the expect. Actual what to expect, yeah, what to side expect, effects, side benefits, effects, all that stuff. And how you manage it. And then the month after, so we'll do, we'll do um, doping. Yeah. And, you know. What not to do what, and not, what you shouldn't do. Why? No, no, just, just um, case yeah, studies, bro. Case studies, yeah. That's yeah. just interesting, bro, because they're taking that to the edge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but I'm going to send you that documentary. I want to. I would love to hear it, your yeah, thoughts, yeah, bro. Yeah, absolutely. I man. think you'd really like it, bro. Um, so, is there anything that like? I think you kind of covered everything, bro. Uh, what would you want to leave? So, if I'll say that what's your part in comments, bro? That um, testosterone is not a bad hormone. It's not the evil, dangerous hormone that everyone's unfortunately encircled it to be it has benefits at all levels on the condition that it's managed it's interpreted and it's it's uh, uh, um, directed by trained clinicians who are supporting the benefits around it whilst mitigating the risks and making sure that you're safe throughout the journey to the point that actually there is evidences after evidences that women can be given testosterone as well I'm talking mainly about postmenopausal women who actually there's benefits in that as well. There's a really big um, place in, in Stratford, a uh, menopause clinic, actually been given a lot of cre uh, credit because they're actually prescribing the use of testosterone in the postmenopausal women, which you can talk about another occasion as well. So I think it's not that kind of, you know, that dangerous lethal hormone that's used in the boys' lockers to make them, you know, turn them into superheroes and superhuman serum. It's not that at all. We're looking at it from a medicinal point of view. We're looking at it from a regulated point of view. We're looking at it managed through the close eye of a trained clinician. And if you have that, it is a very safe, probably one of the most safest hormone replacement therapies out there in response to any of the other hormones, including thyroid, cortisol, insulin. These are actually, you know, can be used and if used inappropriately are far more dangerous mm. than the use of testosterone. I think that needs to be discussed as well. But yeah, I think it's a great hormone. I think it's been given a real bad rap. And just like you said at the beginning, when you say testosterone, you think Arnold Schwarzenegger straight away. And those PDUs and those anabolic drug heads, unfortunately. Thank you very much, Coach Emery. Work long fake. Okay. And nice uh, turtleneck, by the way. Thank you. Did you guys notice you had a turtleneck on? Uh, I wanted to do, you know, the beast glasses look like beast. Why man. didn't you bring? Oh, I forgot to order your yeah, glasses, you man. See. And I'll order other ones for you. What's that? Yeah, you can't. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, what made you choose a turtleneck though? That's the thing. I think I was thinking the academic. Let me just try this. Go on. Let's try it. You ready? Oh, snap. What bro, you, you look like you come from Miami Vice. <laughs> that yeah, or Miami. 90s R&B video, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Boys <to men>. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, I really enjoyed this uh, conversation. Zach Lohan, uh, uh, doctor, for coming down. And 
uh, everyone at home, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and free Palestine. <laughs>